All right, well, I do have to say today was a really bad day of fishing, but that's why they call it fishing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're getting everything all packed up and heading back, and that's when I'm gonna open the special box. By the way, I started wearing sunglasses when I'm talking to the camera, just because it's kind of like the big daddy effect. I noticed I talk better with the camera when I have sunglasses on. It's like a little kid in Big Daddy when he thinks he's uh, invisible. I think it's a great idea. Kind of helps a little bit. So I'll, I guess I'll uh, see you guys when I get to the house and open up the sweet box I got. All right, this is awkward. I'll see you then. And we're back at home. So the deal is we get to open that box I showed you guys in last week's video. That one's sitting right there. And I even might even show you my new guitar that I got too. What's in that box, every single YouTuber that has reviewed it with its competitor has failed to mention one thing about it. One very, very important thing. We will get into that when we open the box. Seriously, I don't know why no one talks about it. It's crazy, but I'm gonna set you guys down. This is what I've been waiting for. Super stoked. And I'm super stoked you guys will get to see this. Here it is, DJI Ron and S. And I have the crane too. The thing with this guy that I wanted to cover big time is the analog stick on here. With the DJI Ron and S and the crane too, I have used the crane too immensely. I have used it for weddings, car videos. You can go back and look at some of the last videos that I've made. This is what I was using was the Crane 2. I like gimbals, I enjoy it. I used to use a Steadicam all the time until I came across this guy. And I just liked the movements when it comes to weddings and car videos. It just makes it look, it's a weird word for me to fucking say, but elegant. The slow motion makes everything look a little bit more elegant. And here's the thing. With this guy, the analog stick on here, this one has an actual thumbstick. This is why I like DJI. Pretty much equivalent to kind of like their drone thumbsticks. If you guys have a drone, this guy is like the old PSPs back in like 2009 or 2008. I don't know exactly when these came out, but there's a little analog stick on here. This little guy right here. The amount of accuracy to get with this little piece of shit is absolutely insane. When you have anything controller wise to control something and have precise movements, you have a thumbstick. It's a thumbstick. Whereas this is flat and it's a pain in the ass when you're trying to get those precise shots. Xbox controller, thumbstick. PlayStation controller, analog thumbstick. This is why I bought this. This has a lot of great features. This also has a lot of great features. They both are very good gimbals, but for the money, I think this is way more worth it just because it's a little bit more user-friendly in my own opinion. Let's open this bad boy up. Oh, yes. Let's open this bad boy up. DJI Ron and S. Holy banana sandwich. This is the top portion of it. Obviously this is the gimbal part with the motors. This has the joystick. So the reason why I like the joystick is because you can get more precise movements left and right. It's freaking money. Compared to the PSP thumbstick, just like what's on the crane to something flat, you're not gonna get too much control with. This is, it's just a pain in the ass. Where you're resting your hand on this side, you're already more comfortable with using your thumb and pushing it to the left like this. When you have to reach over to push it to the right when you're in manual mode, it's just more of a pain. And it's kind of frustrating sometimes because sometimes it'll stick. And that's like another thing too, is if anything was to get underneath this joystick, this flat joystick, it would probably stick. That would just be even more of a pain in the ass. The joystick on the DJI Ron and S, if th something was to spill into this, this could potentially stick too, but not as easy as something that's flat. This is, this is perfect. Hope you guys agree. Now let's get back to the box. So what's in the box? We have top gimbal portion. We have the battery. We have the feet for the bottom of the Ron and S so it's easier to balance. This thing makes life so much easier. It's the same as the crane too. So they both have feet just like this to help with balancing. And it's also a good grip when you have it attached to the gimbal it's itself, which is nice. This actually comes with like a rubber on it. Crane two is just straight metal. And this is a little bit more ergonomic for your hand and when you're holding it. I can already tell that I'm gonna like it a lot. Over here in the right, we have the Manfrotto mounting bracket. Then we have the charging brick. And then I'm assuming this case right here, happens to be 
the case with all the cords. So when we open this up, it's very well organized and all the cords should be in here. But let's get a better look at this and uh, we'll just uh, do this. Sweet. Okay, so what we have here is a camera mounting plate. Not exactly sure what this does, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Some Allen wrenches. We have a RSS IR control cable. We have a lens support. This is the charging cord, which is type C, if you're wondering. We have our multi-camera control cables. This one's a type C, and then it also comes with a type B as well. The GH5 that I use will take the type C. Some screws, I'm assuming for this. I'm sure we'll find out what this is for. And last but not least, your camera screws that go on the bottom of your Manfrotto plate to hook up your camera to the top of this plate. Sweet. Now with the battery pack, you just make sure this is unlocked right here on the gimbals. The battery pack slides on and then you click it in just like that. Feels really good. It's a little heavier than the crane too. We'll get into the specs here in a second, but I just wanted to see how this felt in the hand. Oh yeah, that's a game changer in itself. I really like that. So it has the focus wheel, power buttons right here, record button right here. I'm sure this is uh, manual to change the settings or the modes. And uh, yeah, let's do some B-roll of this sexy thing. Super stoked. So this was mostly shot, or a few of those shots were shot with the crane too. Let's set them both on the table and talk a little bit about them. What I like, what I don't like, a little bit more in depth, and then maybe some test shots. Let's do it. All right, so I have the Ronin S and the Crane 2 sitting here on the table. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of each one, and I'm gonna try to make it fast because this is kind of the boring part. The Crane 2, the pros about this one is I like that it has an LCD screen on it. I like that the batteries are changeable. So if you needed an extra set, which you probably won't because these batteries last up to 18 hours, which is awesome. I've used this, I've, I've never had to change the batteries when I was shooting once, until I get home, take them out, and you get the point. Another thing that I like about this is the weight. The actual weight of the rig is almost three pounds. It's a lot lighter than the Ronin S. And another thing is accessories. Accessories such as the handlebar grips. Accessories that come with the crane, there's more accessories for this than there is this right now. Also to note, a little crane two hack if you will. I put my camera strap on here, and when I have the Crane 2 making those three points of contact, well, I mean, you do have a steady cam, and I guess it doesn't really matter, but it helps support and helps that your arms don't get tired. On to the pros about the Ronin S compared to the Crane 2. I like that this bar right here doesn't cover the LCD screen on the back so you can see what you're doing. For the most part, there's some angles that you end up getting into where you still won't be able to see the LCD screen, but this is by far better than the Crane 2. I like the joystick. Uh, we're gonna talk about this the whole time. It's awesome. I like that the lens holder has wheels on it, so if you happen to leave it on the focus track or the zoom track, it actually moves these wheels. It doesn't keep it stuck, like whereas the Zion Crane 2 would stop it if you had it sitting on that track. Another thing that I like about the Ronin S is the fact that it's a little bit more ergonomic for me, especially the grips too on the stand at the bottom. It just feels nicer in the hand if you know what I mean. The weight of this thing is heavy. It's like four, it's four pounds compared to the 2.76 whatever this is. I mean, it's not that much of a difference, but weight over a long period of time could get pretty tiring on your arm. The Ronin S can hold up to almost eight pounds of big girthy camera. And I'm sure if some of you have seen a lot of other reviews where they have like a C100 sitting on it, this is seven pounds and this is almost eight pounds. So obviously the Ronin S will win in that, that battle. Another thing, the app for the Ronin S versus the app for the Crane 2 blows it out of the water. I've, I've had problems with the app with the Crane 2. It's just another thing that was a pain in the ass. Whereas when I took this out of the box and hooked everything up and put my camera on and synced the motors and it, it was, it was 
perfect. And then being able to navigate through the time-lapse modes and stuff like that, this obviously takes the win. Another thing to mention about the Ronin S that's better than the Crane 2 is probably the information that's going back and forth between the camera. Since this is a Type-C and this is a Type-B, right there. Both of them are three axis gimbals. Both of them have Bluetooth 4.0. I don't really give a shit about that. I care about the real world stuff and using it in scenarios. So far from what I've done and used with this, the Ronin S can take my money. The Ronin S is $699, $700. Crane 2 is $649, $650. Either way, it's a $50 difference. If it was me personally, I would buy the Ronin S. Sorry, Crane 2. You're good while it lasted. But enough about that. Let's do some B-roll of my new guitar that I got. We'll set the guitar on the table and do some B-roll of it with the Ronin S. We'll save like side-by-side -side comparisons for a later date, maybe another episode. We'll do side-by-sides. I wanna actually be able to get this out and use it for my own knowledge rather than reading all the shit that's online. Next, I wanna actually be able to use it and see how much I like it. I know that I'm probably gonna like it a lot more than the crane, so yeah, we'll just leave it at that. One thing I forgot about this thing is it does the infinite roll. Not like I'm gonna use it all the time, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, so if you guys enjoyed the video, slap that thumbs up button if it was informational for you, or if you liked it. If you don't like it, fucking hit the thumbs down button. That's cool too. Subscribe, and I'll love you forever. Peace out, guys. really like this thumb stick. What? I, this joystick, thumb stick, flat stick, analog stick, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's the shit. <laughs>